Shalom. I want to welcome you to King James Bible University, San Antonio. As we get ready to go into a lesson today, it is called the Apostles Ship. It's a play on words and it has a spiritual meaning. And our theme scripture is going to be coming from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. And it reads, And they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So as we get ready to get into this lesson in a moment, uh, the reason behind this is because, you know, everyone claims to have the truth. When we were in the Christian church, when we were in Christianity, whatever type of denomination you were in or were into, and also other type of books out there, every Bible-based, so-called Bible-based uh, religious system claims to be following the doctrine of Christ and in turn following and teaching what the apostles taught. So we have to break this thing down and we have to examine to understand what is the apostles ship. Okay. What is it? What's in it? And what must we be doing? And we have to cross examine everything we ever learned and find out, does it pass the test? If it doesn't pass the test, you got to dump it and we have to hold on to the truth. So uh, without further ado, I'm Elder Fields. I want to thank you for joining us as we get ready to go down this journey and cross these waters and deal with the apostleship. Thank you. All right, we're about to get started here. As you know, here at King James Bible University, we only use strictly the Sovereign King James Bible. We don't use any other uh, books, uh, reference books, reference Bibles, concordances, uh, so on and so forth. And we deal with precepts. So before we get started with this teaching, this slide here I want to read some precepts to you to let you know how we do things all right second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 and it reads knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation so when we deal with the Bible we don't deal with what you think how you feel what this says to you we have to deal with what the precepts are declaring Ecclesiastes 12 12 and further, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is the weariness of the flesh. So that's why we don't use these books that men wrote trying to tell you about God. We use the book that God wrote through the prophets, which is the scriptures, the Sovereign King James Bible. 
and then we use the scriptures to tell you to learn what God is telling us as a people of Israel and Isaiah 34 verse 16 and it reads seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail not one prophecy not one precept shall fail none shall want her mate you can't add anything to it you can't take nothing away from it if you do so the plagues that are written in this book shall come upon you let me read it again Isaiah 34 16 seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail none shall want her mate for my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them so all of these precepts all of these scriptures were released from heaven by the spirit of Christ upon the prophets and as they spoke the word remember holy men of old spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost and then God had the prophets write down and the scribes write down what was being said and that's how we got the Bible all right and then God gathered all these words into a book and we have in the English the sovereign King James Bible which we will use in today's teaching so let's get started in this lesson I wanted to kind of give you that background if you're new to us here at King James Bible University we don't use other books we're gonna strictly go with the scriptures so here we go the Apostles doctrine now remember there's a whole lot of people out here a whole lot of denominations a whole lot of Christian groups uh, Bible thumpers religious entities who claim to be speaking the truth okay and if you want to find out what truth is the Word of God is truth my brother my sister okay so now there's a whole lot of entities the Catholic Church they claim to speak the truth the evangelicals claim to be speaking the truth the Pentecostals claim to be speaking the truth the Baptists claim to be speaking the truth the nominal Christian claims to be speaking the truth the fundamentalists claim to be speaking the truth all these groups claim to be speaking the truth and many more and then you not even counting all the other religions out there that men have created and men are trapped worshiping false idols and false gods but when we come to this Bible we got to know who was the Bible written to and who sent the word and who the audience is and who is the author. Now, the author and finisher of our faith is the spirit of Christ, which is the mighty word that came down from heaven. You'll find that in the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 15. Now, let's move forward. I'm about to read this now pertaining to the apostles doctrine. I want to give you a little background about myself uh, before I came into the knowledge of this truth. I spent many a years in the apostolic arena, in the apostolic Pentecostal oneness, oneness, Pentecostal holiness arena as a pastor and as a teacher. And they drilled this apostolic doctrine into our mind. And we studied and studied and we were adamant about it because we thought that we had the truth. And so toward the apostolic, their concept of the apostolic doctrine is found now, these scriptures are true, but this is not the whole doctrine of Christ. Um, they, if you ask an apostolic preacher, he's going to tell you what the apostolic doctrine is Acts 2, 1 through 4, Acts 2, 36, and Acts 2, 38. And on top of that, you have Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Now, we have another phenomenon where you have people who have come into a knowledge that they're Israel and they're trying to mix Christian doctrine with the fact that they're Israel and so you may hear a term like Hebrew apostolic I never heard that before it's nothing biblical and but you have people out here professing to be Hebrew apostolics and remember the term apostolic is not in the Bible but apostle is also you have the camps and they claim to be teaching the truth out of the Bible so Let's move on and let's read Acts 2, 42. And it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. The day in this scripture was the 5,000 men, not counting their children and their, fam their wives, who came 
to the knowledge of Christ on the day of Pentecost as Peter and the other apostles proclaimed Christ in Jerusalem. All right. On the day of Pentecost, you can find that in Acts chapter two. Now, let's move down to Proverbs four, one and two. So first of all, you have to understand the apostles. Who, who is an apostle and who are the apostles? Because the scripture here says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, not in a apostles doctrine. So the apostles are the 12 men that Christ chose and he put his word upon them and used them to raise up Israel to bring Israel into this renewed covenant that God had promised. And doctrine simply means teaching. Okay. So now Proverbs four, verse one and two, hear ye children, the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake not my law. So understand the source of everything that pertains to life is the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord is speaking through Solomon and the spirit of the Lord is telling us through the wisdom of Solomon in the book of Proverbs that I, the spirit of the Lord or Christ give you good doctrine. Okay. Good teaching. Now, where is that teaching? He lets us know a key here. He says, forsake ye not my law. The doctrine of God and the doctrine of Christ is found in the law and the prophets. The foundation of your Bible understanding has to be rooted in the law. Okay. The law, the first five books, that is the foundation. Okay. And you have to understand that to understand the rest of the Bible because everything has to be weighed and tested through what God spoke to Israel through Moses and given us a law. All right. Now we're going to move down to Deuteronomy 32 verse one and two. It says, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth, that good doctrine, all right, that law, all right, comes out of the mouth of God through the prophets. Verse two, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. The grass in this scripture verse two is Israel the tender herb are those in Israel that have a tender heart to receive the truth okay and the doctrine the teaching and the truth that is found in the precepts will fall from heaven by the word of God as rain upon Israel it's kind of uh, similar to Psalms 133 I'm not going to read it. You can go down and read that at another time. But let's keep this thing moving. Remember, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Who? The early church. Who? The ones that the Spirit of Christ sent the 12 to go speak the truth to. Now, this slide tells us something very important. Remember, whose report should we believe? Should we believe the report of the preacher? Should we believe the report of the camp leader? Should we believe the report of the Vatican? Should we believe the report of uh, Islam or the report of Baha'ism or the report of Hinduism? Uh, when it comes to the Bible, should we believe the, the report of people who use the Bible or should we believe the Bible itself? So this question is, whose report should we believe? Now, let's get down into the mud. Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. To whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So here we come, that doctrine word again, doctrine again. Remember, I've heard this before. You'll find some preachers and some Christians, they'll say, well, we don't want no doctrine. We want to serve the Lord. We don't want no doctrine. They want to have singing and dancing and clapping, singing and dancing. But when it comes to digging into these scriptures, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear a message. They want to hear a preaching. They want to hear a sermon. But don't get into this Bible teaching because it's going to cut them. So they don't want doctrine. 
But here's what the Bible says. Whom shall he who the Lord teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. We must be weaned from the milk. Now, some of us may have had the sincere milk of the word. Others may have had milk of religion or milk of false doctrine. You got to get off that bad milk, that spoiled milk. And you got to get your mouth off of that breast of that Christian church you're in and that pastor and those preachers and those books you've been reading and get into these scriptures. Why? Verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's how God has set up this word. If you're going to understand doctrine, if you're going to understand the teachings of the Bible, if you're going to understand the true doctrine of God in scripture, if you're going to understand the wisdom of God, if you're going to understand anything that pertains to God and life and Israel, we must get it out of the scriptures, precept on precept, line up on line. Now, Peter tells us something in first Peter one and two. It says as newborn babes, you see, when you're coming out of sin and you're waking up like many of us, we, we, we were trapped in Christianity and we are waking up to realize we're Israel. Now, as you wake up to realize you're Israel, you cannot take Christian philosophy with you and mix it with the precepts. You got to cut that stuff off. So when you're waking up, you're, we're waking up as a newborn babe. And so he says, as newborn babes, you could be 70 years old, but now you're coming to the knowledge that you're Israel and this Bible is a covenant between God and you. And you got to find out what you need to do. You're a babe. So he says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So what we have to desire is that sincere milk. We got to get off that spoiled milk and we got to get the sincere milk of the word. Okay. Hebrews 5, 12 and 13. For, wh for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. Now, th this is very powerful here. Listen to what Paul says. For when for when for the time you ought to be teachers. He's speaking to Israel. Some of these leaders in Israel. Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. That is the situation that many of us were in, in the Christian church. Okay. Many of these preachers, you see them on TV. They're in their chapels. They're in the potter's house. They're in all of these big places. They're in the city of refuge. They're in greater rock. They're in, you know, the Vatican, wherever they may be, whoever they may be teaching, they may be on a corner. They may be in that local small uh, corner church, or they may be a big cathedral on the street. There may be a camp standing there and they're telling you A, B, C, and D. But listen what the Bible says. Uh, Hebrews 12, 5 and 12, once again, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you should have been teaching the truth, but you don't have the truth. You don't have the right doctrine. Why? You have need that one teach you again. Why? Because you learn wrong. You learn the false doctrine. You learn the doctrines of men. So we have to be taught again what? The, that which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And so if you want to understand what an oracle of God is, the oracle means the knowledge of God, the desires of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding of God. And there's a whole lot of precepts on those things. You have to do the research. I'm not going to give you to them on this slide, but I'm just reading to you. So because we were in these churches and in these religions, not to mention uh, things outside of the Bible, the, the, the religion of the philosophy of America and all these other places and wherever you may live, Britain, Africa, whatever, uh, we are far from God. And so because we don't didn't know the first principles of the oracles of God, we are such that that had need of milk and strong meat. So listen, your big preacher, your big is coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. The Lord told me to tell you today. Your big preacher, your big shot apostle, your big shot uh, prophet. They don't know anything. They don't know the oracles of God. They are teaching lies and they are in need of milk. 
But God won't even give them milk if they stay on the breast of that false doctrine. But we who have come to this light, now he's given us milk and that we may grow thereby. Okay. And the, here's why there's a need for milk in the beginning of your understanding of the Bible. Verse 13 of Hebrews 5. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. An example of milk is when the preacher tells you, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, that is a true principle. That is a true precept. But the man reading the precept can't break it down and tell you what it means. So he's telling you that God loves everybody on the planet. You better search the scriptures and find the truth. And, and so that that milk of that verse, the verse is correct, but his understanding is false. OK. And so when a person tries to use the Bible and they don't have the right understanding, they don't use precepts, they're unskillful in the word of righteousness and they are babes. And such were many of us when we were trapped in these religious systems. And uh, we got to get out of that, brothers and sisters. So whose report we're going to believe? Are we going to re believe the report of the preacher? Or are we going to believe the precepts? Because the precepts come from God. Remember, God told us, I'll give you good doctrine. I'll give you good teaching. I'll give you good knowledge, good understanding. Okay? And so we got to move this train of forward a little bit more so let us keep it going now the precepts and the word of God wasn't given to the world even though somebody would tell you God to love the world he did not give the, the covenant to the world he gave the covenant to the sons of Abraham Isaac and Jacob he gave the covenant to the 12 tribes of Israel and God doesn't change now, let's hear what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Because if you want to find out what the Bible is, you got to get into the precepts and you got to go to the real Israelites and not the fake ones. All right. Romans 3, 1 and 2. It says, what advantage then hath the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, I have a question for you. You may not have heard this before, but I have a question. I'm, no, I'm not going to give you the answer. I'm talking to those who don't know. But Paul says there's an advantage that the Jew has. And I'm going to ask you who are listening to this and watching this, who is the Jew? You better know what Jew means, because what you think it means is not what it means. All right. Jew and Jewish is not the same. Ish means like, like unto. It's not the original. All right. Judah doesn't mean Jew either. You better find out what the word Jew means. So what advantage then have the Jew and those Jews are Israelites and what profit is there of circumcision? Verse two, much every way, chiefly because unto them, unto the Jew were committed the oracles of God. And we already told you that the oracles of God is the knowledge of God. The wisdom of God, the will of God, the understanding of God, the law of God, the truth of God. All right. So rock 36, 14. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. So in the book of Sirach, out of the sovereign King James Bible, Sirach is in the section of the Bible called the Apocrypha, which sits between the New, the Old Testament it comes right after Malachi and it's finished right before Matthew. So that 400 years of silence that the Christian preacher told you, he lied. There's 14 books that fit in there that open up the scriptures. Sirach is one of them. It is also called Ecclesiasticus. All right. Fill Zion. Fill Zion is Israel with thine unspeakable oracles. Who were the oracles committed to? The Jew or the Israelite. And who is the Jew and the Israelite? Thy people, the people of God, with thy glory. And staying in the Apocrypha, we're down in 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 10 through 12. Remember, 
He said we must desire the sincere milk of the word. I'm dealing with the word right now. The word is the oracles. The law is the oracles. The law is the word. And the law is the milk. Okay? Second Ezra 8.10 For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body that it is to say out of the breast milk be given which is the fruit of the breast that the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time till thou disposest it to thy mercy. Understand this once again. For thou hast commanded out of the parts of the body, that is to say out of the breast. Where does the milk come from? God is, this is a parable, but he's using a natural thing to decree a spiritual thing. The milk that feeds the baby that causes this babe to grow comes from the breast. Okay. So it says out of the breast milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast, the fruit, the produce of the breast is the milk. The produce of the breast of God is a spiritual thing. It's the law. It's the testimony. It's the oracles. It's the knowledge, it's the wisdom, it's the understanding. Verse 11, that the thing which is fashioned, a baby, a new beginning, newborn babe in the spirit, or a natural babe. It says that the thing which is fashioned may be nourished for a time till thou disposes it to thy mercy or to thy love. Verse 12, thou broughtest it up with thy righteousness. If you want to find out what God righteousness is, Psalms 119, 142. Go read it for yourself. Thou broughtest it up with thy righteousness and nurturedest it in thy law and reformest it with thy judgments. So in other words, that babe that is on that sincere milk of the word is being brought up in the righteousness of God. Psalms 119, 142. It says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So we get the righteousness out of the laws of God. We got to get into the first five books. All right. And then we got to get into the precepts, the law and the prophets. Okay. And nurtures it in thy law. So that babe has to become nurtured in the law and the commandments and the statutes of God. And as we are nurtured in the law in the commandments and the statutes of God, we're changed because to be reformed means to be changed and reformest it, that babe with thy judgment. The word judgment actually means doctrines and teachings. Okay. So we're breaking this down about the doctrine of God, the good doctrine. It comes from the law. The apostles doctrine is that same good doctrine. Okay. Let's keep this ball rolling. Here we are in the book of Sirach. We're spending a lot of time in the apocrypha, my brothers and sisters. In the book of Sirach, which is called, also called known as Ecclesiasticus, we're in chapter 19, verse 19. It says, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord or of the creator is the doctrine of life. So that good doctrine that he's going to give us is the doctrine of life. Where do we find it? It's the knowledge of the commandments of the creator. Okay. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. So if a person doesn't have the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord, he doesn't know the precepts. He doesn't know the inner workings of the law and the prophets. He's not going to have life. All right. So the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. There's only one true doctrine in this Bible. Okay. And they that do things that please him, please the creator shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's a powerful precept. All right. Just meditate on that one. There's a whole lot of meat on that bone. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. We want to have the right to the tree of life. Then we got to be operating and living in the doctrine of life, which is found in the knowledge of the commandments of the creator. Acts 2.42. And this is what they were doing in Acts 2.42. It says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, 
We want to understand where did the apostles get their doctrine from? They didn't create a new doctrine. They didn't create some new message. They didn't create some new philosophy called Christianity and put it out there and began to preach something that the Bible didn't lay the groundwork with. They stood in the same precepts that Moses gave and the same precepts that the prophets gave. And we're about to prove that we're going to go in Psalm 78, verse two. Listen to what the spirit of the Lord says. I will open my mouth in a parable. And this is why your preacher don't understand the Bible. The Bible is mostly parables and dark sayings and similitudes. And, and, and you have to understand how these things work. You can't read the Bible literally and think you're going to understand what it's saying. Like I said earlier, one of the great tenets of the apostolic church is Acts 238. So they'll get up and they'll preach a message and they'll call people come to Christ and you got to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then people start running to the altar and they'll start baptizing folk and you'll hear people crying. They're sorry and all that. And at the end of the day, they'll tell people they're saved. But what they did is that what Acts 238 means? They didn't break it down with precepts to understand what it means. They're just trying to follow the thing literally. That's what they're doing is not what the scripture is saying. OK, and I'm not here to break that down. That's another teaching coming at another time. But the Bible operates this way. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. I will utter unknown sayings, dark sayings, things that men cannot figure out, things that men do not understand because it's from heaven. And you can't understand it unless the spirit of truth and the precepts unlock it. OK, Matthew 13, 34. Listen to how Jesus taught and we call him by his Hebrew name, Yahawashai. Yahawashai or the name Jesus means the same thing. It means salvation. All these things spake Jesus or Yahawashai unto the multitude in parables. How did he speak in parables? Like he says in Psalm 78, 2, I will open my mouth in a parable. Now back to Matthew 34, 13, 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable spake he not unto them. So every time Yahweh was speaking to people, whether it was a crowd, whether it was the, 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 the uh, tax collectors and the sinners or whether it was the Pharisees and the scribes or whether it was the apostles in all the mix of that, he spoke to all of them in parables. Now, when he got back with the, the apostles, the disciples in secret, he broke those parables down and taught them the precepts, how to understand a parable. But when he's in a public setting, speaking and releasing the word from heaven, he's speaking parable. All right. So nowhere in the Bible is he talking literal. He's speaking parable. All right. Deuteronomy 18, 15. This is a powerful thing. The Lord which means the spirit of God, thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. And so the spirit of God is talking to the man, Moses, the prophet, Moses, the, the Lord, thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. So Moses is, t is saying to Israel that the spirit of God is going to raise up a prophet to Israel from the midst of Israel of the Israelite men like Moses and Moses says unto him, ye shall listen, ye shall hearken, ye shall obey. Now, who is that prophet? If you ask a Christian, that guy is going to say it's Joshua, but Joshua is not that prophet. Somebody will say, maybe it's Elijah. Elijah is not that prophet. Maybe some will say it's one of the prophets like Ezekiel, but Ezekiel is not that prophet. Now, this prophet that God will raise up unto Israel, like Moses, that we must listen to. How did God talk to Moses? God didn't talk to Moses in a parable. He spoke to Moses face to face. You can find that out in Numbers 12. Go read Numbers 12, Christian. Go read Numbers 12, Hebrew brother and sister, and see how God speaks. Anytime somebody's telling you God spoke to them in audible voice or spoke to them directly, they're lying. He didn't speak to Nobody but Moses and this prophet he's talking about that way. 
he spoke to the rest of us in parables, in dark sayings, in proverbs. It's found in the scriptures. Let's keep it moving. Shalom once again. Now, if we're going to understand the apostles' doctrine and how the apostles taught what they taught, we better understand the prophets, the law and the prophets. We're in the law, the book of Deuteronomy. All right, Deuteronomy 18, 15, we just read to you. We're now about to pick up at verse 18. And this is coming from the mouth of the spirit of the Lord directly to Moses. Because remember, he speaks to Moses face to face. And the spirit of God says, I will raise up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, like unto you, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth. OK, when those words come in his mouth, how is he going to speak in a parable? OK, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So this prophet that comes that's like Moses, who God speaks face to face and directly when he opens his God's going to put his words in his mouth. The spirit of the Lord is going to put his words in that prophet's mouth. And when that prophet speaks to Israel, he's going to speak to Israel everything that the spirit of God has commanded. And remember the Spirit of God already told us in Psalm 78, I will open my mouth in a parable. Okay, so let's keep it moving. Verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever among Israel, whosoever Israel will not hearken unto my words. You don't want to obey and listen and follow the precepts and the commandments of the words, which that prophet, which he shall speak in my name. Listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I will require it of him. Let's read this again. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he, that specific prophet like Moses, shall, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So in other words, if we do not listen and heed and hearken to the words spoken from the mouth of that prophet, from the mouth of that eunuch, which means chief in Israel, from the mouth of that one like Moses, whom God speaks face to face, God's going to require every word that he spoke up on us. And if God requires it, that means he's about to tell us what it means. I'm not going to tell you what it means. He's going to tell you. Verse 20. But the prophet. Notice the prophet in verse 18 is capital. It's a specific prophet. Like Moses. It's dealing with Christ. It's dealing with Yahawashai. It's dealing with Jesus, the man Jesus. But in verse 20, it's talking about the rest of us who teach. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, that preacher, I'm speaking for the Lord this Sunday. Praise God. Hallelujah. That guy, that, that guy down in uh, Houston, Texas with 45,000 people who only speaks sweet words and he and, and, and claims to speak the truth and God has never spoken to him because he's a Gentile. All right. That guy. All right. That other guy north of him that's burly and loud and big who claims to speak for God and sell book after book and got rich. And that other guy, a lot of these guys in Texas, man. <laughs> wow. That other guy up north, North Texas, they got his own airport claims to be speaking for God. Listen to what the spirit of God says. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So God tells us in these verses, if we don't hearken to the words which the prophet, that's like Moses, which is Yahawashai speaks in parable. If we don't listen to him, we're going to die. Just like if we follow a false prophet, we're going to die. All right. It's the same judgment. So I ask you this question. Do you think the apostles, when they began to teach after Pentecost and they began to go among Israel and teach and do what Yahweh or Jesus commanded them to do and teach the kingdom of God amongst Israel, do you think they get out there and taught their own thing knowing that if they don't teach what exactly what the precepts teach, God's going to require of them and they'll be put to death. Do you think they went out there and created some Christian doctrine? If you think that, I got a whole lot of beachfront property called the Sahara 
then I can go get some and, and I can bring you some sand and I'll sell it to you because that means you're not a smart person. Okay, let's keep this thing moving. Luke 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So now, Yahweh, you know him as Jesus, is speaking to the apostles. And he's told, and, and so he said unto them, the apostles, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. So you got to go back to the foundation, the law of Moses. And where else do we got to go to get our understanding? And in the prophets, and where else do we got to go? And in the Psalms, all right, concerning me. That also includes those books that were taken out in 1885 to keep you blind, worshiping the wrong thing, the Apocrypha. It, that's included in there, okay? Verse 45, then open he their understanding. So after Yahweh or Jesus spoke this to the apostles, he began to teach them and then he opened their understanding through the law of Moses, through the prophets, through the Psalms, that they might understand the scriptures. So if you don't understand the law of Moses and you don't understand the prophets and you don't understand the Psalms, you have no clue about the precepts, you have no understanding and you just keep preaching a feel good message and religion, then that's proof that you don't know God and God ain't dealing with you. Okay. Over here in Israel, we got to stand on these precepts, not on a purple robe or a, a star David or some stupid head wrap. We got to stand on the word because if we don't stand on the truth, then God is going to require that of us. And we just like that prophet in Deuteronomy 18, 20 will be put to death. So my brother, sister, this is a serious business. This doctrine thing is serious. You better know who you're learning from and you better get the right teaching and we better stop listening to fools. John 7:16. And 17, Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So the spirit of Christ is telling us through Yahweh that the doctrine that he's teaching is not his own. It's, it's not from the flesh. It's not from man. It came from God. And if we will do the will of God, we should know of the doctrine. And therein lies the problem. All right. God always puts a plumb line amongst us. The plumb line is Isaiah 28, 13. Because you got a whole lot of people preaching. But are they preaching the doctrine that Christ preached, that Jesus preached? Isaiah 28, 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That's how the word comes to Israel. Now, if Israel is caught in lies and in the doctrines of men and in philosophies and religions like Christianity, Pentecostalism, Catholicism, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormonism, uh, Jehovah Witness and all these other false doctrines, if we caught up in that stuff, then this is how the words come into us, unless we come to this truth. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept on precept, line up on line, here a little and there a little. Why? That they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. And this is what happens in these religions. You hear these lies, you hear these false doctrines, you're building your hope on something that's not true. So they got you believing in a rapture. And if you want to know what the rapture really is, I got a teaching out there on King James Bible University, San Antonio, dealing with the rapture. Go, go check that out. Okay. You will fall backwards. We'll be broken. We'll be snared. And to be taken means to be put to death. And I don't want to die for no stupidity. And hopefully you don't want to either. All right. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people in these churches, in these religions, draw near me with their mouth. It's easy to say, I love God. Hallelujah. And with their lips do honor me. 
but have removed their heart far from me. You can never get the truth out of a lie. The lie is going to have your heart far from God, though you deceive thinking you're close to God. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. That's what we see rampant, whether it's on a corner with a microphone. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. You got on pants? <laughs> hey, brother. Precepts of men. My brother, don't you know that Jesus loves you? Just accept Jesus as your savior. Precepts of men. It doesn't matter what you do. Just simply believe precepts of men. Lies, deception. When we were trapped in these whorehouses, in these houses called churches, the next time you go to, if you're still going to a Christian church, when you go into that church, I want you to read Amos 5.21. Amos 5, around 18 to 21. And then think about then going to church and watch. If you go into one of these big cathedrals, new churches, big churches, also look at the top of the church and see what they have on the top of the church. King James Bible, North Carolina, Elder T just put out a teaching last week about the tower. On the top of every church, they got a phallus symbol, a penis. And you go in there thinking you're bowing, you're worshiping God. No, you're going into a whorehouse. Okay. And so where do these doctors of men come from? These leaders, blind leaders that lead the blind, who are they following? They're following a pit viper. Isaiah 9, 15. The ancient and honorable, which is Satan. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. So no matter how much knowledge or how famous or how wealthy or how blessed in the carnal way of thinking that these preachers look or appear to be, they are working for the devil if they don't teach the precepts, they don't teach what the apostles taught, they don't teach what Christ taught, they don't teach what Moses taught. They're following the devil. And that's why we're messed up in this in, in, in this society. Okay? So the prophet that follows the angel honorable, he's the tail, he's a liar. Verse 16, for the leaders of this people, the leaders of Israel caused them to err. I can name some leaders that Israel in captivity in America loved to mention. Martin Luther King, he was a leader put before us. He led you into error. Malcolm X was a leader. He led you to error because he didn't follow the precepts. Every Christian religion, every pastor you know on a local level or a big level, they're leading you to error because they don't follow the precepts. Where the leader goes, the people go. For the leaders of this people caused them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. We have been we have become so accustomed as a people to being destroyed in a destroyed uh, way of living and thinking, and destroyed in understanding that we call our own destruction a blessing. What a shame! How did they err? Isaiah 27, 28, verse seven. But they also have erred through wine. That wine is false teaching and through strong drink, philosophies of men, Christian doctrine. Okay. But they also have air through wine and through strong drink and are out of the way. God takes something natural, a person getting boozed up to explain a spiritual thing. The priest and the prophet. Isn't that what's in the so-called church? The priest or the pastor and the prophet? Prophetess, prophet, and all that stuff. Apostles. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. You got the wrong doctrine. You got the wrong understanding. You don't have the precepts. You don't have the spirit of truth. You've been deceived, and a strong delusion has come up on your mind. That's that strong drink. 
because you didn't like to retain God in your knowledge. God gave us up to be reprobate. That's that strong drink. That's that spirit of delusion. It says they are swallowed up of wine, falsities. They are out of the way, out of the path of righteousness through what? Strong drink, through false teachings. They err in vision. Don't can't see nothing, don't know nothing. And because they err in vision, they stumble in judgment, which means they stumble in teaching. They teach lies. So when you're in these churches, this is what's going on. In these camps, this is what's going on. Because they're using all these other books. Every pastor got a whole bunch of books that he goes and researches and speaks to you from books. Most of those books are written by Gentiles. Isaiah 8, 28 and 8. For the tables are full of vomit. So when we go into these churches and we're sitting there thinking we're having a good time and we're hearing the truth and we're singing and dancing, we were caught up in, in a delusion. Caught up with the blue pill. And the table that we thought was giving us good food, good doctrine, is actually giving us vomit. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, and so there is no place clean. That's the condition in this religious system and in this world system and in this carnal system. 2 Corinthians 11.3 but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. That's what they've been giving you, my brother and my sister. They came and give you another Jesus, not simply in the pulpit, but in the movie theater. And from the movie theater, to the TV screen, from the TV screen to the corner. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, they're preaching a Jesus that the apostles never preached about. They're preaching a salvation that the apostles never preached about. Or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another message, which ye have not accepted, ye might bear, ye might well bear him, with him. In other words, you better, like Eve should have got away from the serpent, you better get away from that guy that's bringing that other doctrine because he's working for that same serpent that beguiled Eve in the garden. And so everything that you hear and that you ever heard pertaining to the Bible, you better learn how to test it. And it can only be tested through precepts. And if it passed the precept test, then keep it. If it don't, throw it in the trash. First John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Believe not every spirit. Try the spirit. In Christianity, in the Christian church, they would, the Pentecostals would say, try the spirit by the spirit. Do you, what are you saying? That's not even the Bible. But that don't even make sense. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try to test, examine the spirit, whether they be of God. How do you do it? Precept on precept, line up on line, here a little, there a little. Why? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Even the so-called Hebrew Israelite who's on the corner telling you supposedly he's speaking to you the word of truth, you better try that spirit, see if it's of God. If he have error in him, wow, bounce. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14. For such are false apostles, that's why we gotta try those spirits, those who preach another Jesus. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transform, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So the true apostles of Christ operated precept on precept, line up on line, here a little, there a little. They stayed in alignment with the law and the prophets and the Psalms. The Apocrypha included. The New Testament has to balance everything that came before it. There is a word called equity. 
That means harmony. The Bible has to be harmonious from the first verse to the last. Everything has to flow together. Can't be no conflicts. If there's a conflict, that means it can't be the scripture. It must be my understanding. And I'm telling you, Christianity has a whole lot of conflicts. But in, when you know the precepts, the conflicts are done away with because the truth stands alone. So we got to test every spirit. Why? Because false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ are out here. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's why we got to test it. Test the teaching. Better know who you learn from and test it. Don't just take what I'm saying in this teaching today. You better go examine the scriptures and test every word. Whose report will we believe? When it comes to the apostles and the doctrine they taught, it was the doctrine of Christ. It was that good doctrine. It was the, it was the doctrine of life that came from the law. They came from the law and the prophets. Okay. And here's the proof. Ephesians 2.20. Speaking of the true church, the assembly of the Hebrew that's redeemed. It says, and are built up on the foundation. So the true church is built up on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. They have to balance together. Can't be no conflict between the two. And are built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ, salvation anointed himself, being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building, the church, the body of Christ, not that Christian church, but that body of redeemed Israelite, fitly framed together, groweth up unto a holy temple in the creator. Revelations 21, 14. So Ephesians 2, 20 told us, Paul tells us that God is building a body, a believer. Hebrew, you better get in the truth on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, Christ tells us in Revelations 21, 14, when he gives us a vision of the new Jerusalem and the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Remember, Moses told us in Deuteronomy 18, 18, if we don't heed the voice or the word of the pro that prophet like Moses, which is Christ, and we teach something else, we're going to be put to death. This right here, verse 14, shows you that the, that the apostles didn't go off track. They stayed the course because in the end, in the city of the New Jerusalem, that body of believer, that body of redeemed Hebrews, that city have 12 foundations. The foundation is the apostles. That's the 12 foundations. And in them, in those foundations, are the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So when we get to the apostles' doctrine, understand, the apostles were not Christians. They did not teach any of the doctrines running rampant in Christianity. The 12 apostles were chosen. They were all Israelite vessels who kept the covenant and taught the mysteries of God through the precepts. They taught the truth. They lived the truth. They believed the truth. And so when we get back to Acts 2.42 and those newborn babe believers, Acts 2.42, those are newborn babes that were designed to sincere milk of the word. Many of us are in that category. Many of you who are hearing this word, you're, you're, you're in that category or you're moving through that category. You're getting a little meat on you. You're learning. You're growing. Eat this word. Get this good doctrine. Get this truth. Don't go to another book. Don't, don't listen to somebody's flamboyant way of speech. Get to these scriptures. Come on over here to KJBU and learn the Bible. We only stick with the Bible. Okay?
So in conclusion, understand that the apostles taught, believed, preached, and lived the truth of Christ and the scriptures according to precepts. They weren't Christians, never have been Christians, and never will be Christians. If they were to come back in the earth, they would be amazed and appalled at what is being pushed as the doctrine of God and the faith of Christ. All these Hebrew apostles, just like the prophets, they kept the faith, they kept the truth. They are an example unto us on how we must continue to follow Christ. And my brother and my sister, just like those babes in Acts 2.42, it says they continued steadfastly. We must do the same. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in breaking of bread and in prayers. That doctrine is the doctrine of Christ. It is the whole Bible. Just like Jeremiah had to eat the whole roll, so do you and so do I. So I bid you a shalom. I thank you for sitting with us and being with us in this teaching. May it add some strength and wealth to your spirit. Once again, this is Elder Fields. Shalom. Shalom.